Jeanette is owned and copyrighted by Jeanette, Company Gallery, and Company Media. All rights reserved. Hi, I'm Jeanette, and this is my show. And today we're speaking with, and cooking with, Danny Bowen. Hi. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? Good. We are going to go out and get ingredients right now. Let's go. Where we're at, we're at DePaulo. This is like one of my favorite cheese shops in New York. Have you been here before? Yeah, I have. My husband is Italian American and oh, loves okay. DePaulo. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect. So, this is exciting. Yeah, we gotta grab. Maybe you can help me remember what we need. We need risotto, white wine, Parmesan, and olive oil. Okay. And I'm gonna try to convince them to make me a sandwich, even though they don't make right. Cessna sandwiches, no Pinot, but every time I'm here, they're making someone special a sandwich. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm a fast shopper. Like, okay, um, risotto, risotto, olive, olive oil, oil, Parmesan, Parmesan, and then white wine if they've got it. Just for the, for the risotto. I hope they have risotto here. They, they have to have risotto. So olive oil, um, I don't know. Olive oil is like, it's essentially it's like a juice. Like it's almost like a fruit juice. So yeah. it's all about like, it's not like a wine where if it's aged for a long time, it's better. It needs to be consumed within a certain amount of time. So. Um, anyways, yeah, a lot of, ideally, <laughs> do we do intense yeah, fruity fam? Intense fruity all right, fam. let's do that. All right, we're getting intense fruity fam. Wow. All right, we got it. So I wanted to talk about your experience in different cities as a chef, because as an artist, when you go to a new city, you have designated areas where there are certain galleries, and so you have a very specific experience in the city, and I imagine as a chef, it's similar in terms of like shopping or eating. Well, it's definitely, yeah. I feel like there was a point in my career where when I started out, I was like very obsessive, yeah. right? So like my whole plans, if I had a trip going somewhere, and a lot of times the trips to other cities would revolve around work. Yeah. So it kind of innately like, or it lended itself to that kind of um, yeah. experience. But yeah. so, yeah, I mean, I think there'd be trips where all I did was like eat, like literally yeah. <laughs> just was obsessed with food. It would yeah. be like, it would dictate what I did on that trip. Yeah. And so I think over time, um, I don't know about you, but like, the times of me like checking the hotel, putting my bags on, immediately running out and like checking off a list of different places that I want to go to, that's kind of like um, changed. Like I don't really do it so much. Um, I try to pepper in other things. Yeah. Um, I find myself kind of liking the old more than the new a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. I kind of tell people like New York does this thing where like some of the best restaurants have like the most underwhelming food. Or, like yeah. it's like it's not about just. Yeah the food it's about like the whole thing Experience. you know like yeah. just like the cheese shop it's like it's like great like yeah. they have better cheese than other places <laughs> I mean you can go to Italy and get all that stuff but you're yeah, in Italy exactly. you know what I mean and so like yes. and I don't want to sound like an old dad and be like oh like the only the old stuff is good because it's yeah. not I mean it's a lot of the newest hottest things are like so inspiring yeah. and like that's the best thing right when you can have an experience and you kind of leave feeling Invigorated? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. I'm starving. Do you know why I'm sitting here? Why? I'm checking the camera to make sure it's good. Okay. You're the producer right now? Yeah, I'm like, actually. Or the director? Guys, they're both rolling. They're both rolling. All right, I mean, after that, you can't talk anymore, right? Okay. Until we're done, until taste testing comes. Actually. You had mentioned that you grew up eating risotto. Yeah. And that you haven't had, like, the best risotto 
or a risotto like as good as what you had growing up. So yeah. my goal today is to make a risotto okay. at least as good as what you had growing up. And Ambitious. I, you know, so I thought we'd make like a really simple lemon risotto. Um, and you can start by helping me make the lemon broth. So I have some mushroom stock. You can use a lot of the, classically when you make like risotto, you use like a veal stock or like a beef yeah. broth. Um, yeah. I, I'm doing a mushroom. I want this to be vegetarian. That's um, the thing in Switzerland where I had, because I grew up in Switzerland, where I had all the risotto, they just eat veal, con it's veal everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, mean, veal so, does make an amazing yeah, broth. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But this is just mushroom with a little bit of bay leaf. And so if you want to take like three of these lemons, I like to do this. Oh, your nails look amazing, by the way. Thank you. Um, you got to be careful. I always like find it easier to hold with one hand and then move the lemon okay. At, okay. like a, around because the peeler is sharp. Okay. You don't need to, because if you do this, you're going to peel your hand, which yeah. is not fun. So I kind of hold this in place and then just like kind of drag the lemon like that. Okay. And I just throw these peels in there just from one end to the other. Perfect. And yeah, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. As little pith as possible. I mean, you can go with, I don't mind a little pith. I like okay. that it gives a little bit of bitterness to it. Yeah. But um, so, yeah. While, yeah. so while you're doing that, I'm gonna start with the risotto in this um, pot here. So essentially you wanna start with very simple risotto. It's just like olive oil, butter, onion, or shallot. And um, you just start with that kind of like you basically just like saute that until it's like soft and translucent. Okay. So, um, I, like I said, I'm pretty gratuitous with my olive oil use. I yeah. like to tend to tell people to use enough to coat the bottom of the pan. So, this is probably like four tablespoons of olive oil. And then... At school, did you have to get really precise with your tablespoons? You know, it's funny. I was doing a, a cooking demo with someone yesterday and I showed up and... They had like a, a ruler on the counter. They're like, oh, we didn't know if you wanted to measure your cuts with a ruler because some people oh, are wow. that intense. And I, I worked in restaurants that. like that where they're like, wow. if your dice isn't like, right. You know. um, I kind of find that's wasteful. So it's like, you know, I don't think, believe in like absolute perfection. I think consistency is good. And to answer your question in school, like there was a lot of focus on consistency and like, um, I, I don't like it too been out of shape over it anymore. This is not so, consistent at all. That's so great. Glad. That's perfect. You're getting it in there. That's all that really matters. So the steam is making me sweaty. Um, olive oil is getting warm. Okay, great. And then I'm going to throw like a, this is about a tablespoon of butter in there. Okay, great. And then I'm going to throw in my onion. This is a one, one small onion okay. diced up. So um, onion goes in. And you want to cook this a lot of times when you're reading recipes or something. Yeah. Um, it says to saute something until it's like translucent. Okay. Um, and that all that is is really until it's softened, okay. and that means like that like all of the liquid inside of the onion or whatever this in this case onion has kind of come out and steamed and like released its liquid and like gums off. Yeah. Okay. You're not looking for any color here, so it also doesn't take very long. I tend to like do my risotto on like a more of a higher heat, okay. um, and then like kick it down to low. Yeah. Instead of super low simmer, which takes forever. Forever. Yeah. So. And cooking is all about that. I'm sure like with painting also, it's really about, it's about controlling. You find something like in this case, it's heat and you're just trying to control that heat. So you can take it on the heat, take it off the heat, turn it down low. Um, but yeah, you know, painting is similar. There's a lot of people like believe in like rules. It's like, oh, you have to like only yeah. simmer certain things for a certain yeah. amount of time. I kind of like, I've just interacted with like this dish so many times. I know you can go on a really high heat, cook it, stir yeah. it a couple times. It also depends on how small the vegetables are cut, et cetera. But that's... Yeah. So the then... is similar. One cool thing about bay leaves, I'm going to add bay leaves now. Okay. I love fresh yeah, bay leaves. Yeah, tell me about bay leaves. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to cook with. Okay. Um, I lived in San Francisco for a long time, and there was just, you know, most of the restaurants I cooked in then were Californian restaurants mm -hmm. um, and just used a lot of fresh bay. Uh, one thing I like about bay leaves, and like a lot, a lot of other herbs as well, or... A lot of herbs and bay leaves, um, you would want to like kind of bruise it before you throw it in here to kind oh, of release really? some of the oils. Because you can smell oh, it you now. smack it. Yeah. You can smack it. I just crumple it up. So if you want to crumple that up with your hand and then smell it again. And you really smell oh my God. the aroma start to come yeah, out. So you can throw that in there now. Oh, yeah. I just cook the bay leaf until you can smell the bay leaf. So you can kind of start to smell that. Yeah, completely. Um, and the next thing you want to do is add rice. So okay. the rice... Um, I can't, can't tell you how many times I've Googled how much risotto do you need for one mm -hmm. person dry okay. to cook. Okay. I kind of just go by like my palm and there's oh, like, really? there's us and there's a few other people. So 
everything. We'll make about four servings. Okay. So, I, you know, I feel like like four little small handfuls of rice in here. I'm just going to stir the rice through the fat now, right? Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm kind of toasting the rice. I'm flavoring it with the oil on the butter and yeah. the onion. I love calling the oil fat. I'm only going to call oil fat from now on. It's fat. Just going to toast the rice. And you'll kind of know um, the rice will start to smell toasty. Mm -hmm. It'll start to look a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, it'll start to look a little bit like shinier and like, um, you know, I think that like, you're basically looking just to get it to like this stage right here. So it's like oh, okay. starting to look shiny. It's starting yeah. to look, the onions are starting to get a little golden. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I can see it. And you can smell it, right? That's like the biggest, biggest thing about cooking is not ever just only just sight, but also smell. Right. So at this point, we'll um, go in with some wine. How much? I know for this, I'd probably do about a cup. Okay, that was just like a little bit more okay. than a cup. Yeah. Like, um, and you want the wine to basically cook into the rice yeah. um, and almost cook all the way off. Okay. And so the, it'll like, again, we're just flavoring the rice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the acidity yeah. from the wine is really important in this dish. Okay. And there's acidity in the lemon, but um, there's something Different so magical. Different types of acidity you yeah. want. Yeah. Just going to stir this for a few moments yeah. until you basically see the wine starting to cook off. Um, and then we're going to back to basically the rice and the fat. Rice and fat. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's fat and paint. Like, oh, really? you, yeah, you thin it or you thicken it. You're the general rule is when you're painting is fat over lean. Oh, really? So you start with thinner layers and then you build it up. Yeah, yeah. fat. Lots of I've fat. always been curious, is it possible to have a painting that you make and that it will never, are there paints that just like never dry? Yeah, yeah. The way that oil paint dries is an, it's an oxidation process. So it dries from the outside in. Huh. So if there's no air that touches that inside, it's just wet. So you can have centuries old paint. If air That's... hasn't touched it, if it's under, it's just, yeah. Wow. Can... Is that because of the fat? Because of the fat. <laughs> exactly. Because of the fat. All right. So now this is where you can start ladling in this broth. Okay. Um, so I would go like a full, we'll start with like a ladle with or two. lemon peels? Oh my goodness, it's hot. You can like, yeah, you can kind of go around lemon peel if you want, or I can also just fish it out. And if it's too hot, you can use this towel in your hand and I'll okay, even burn my, yourself. Okay, my peeling was not expert. So it's fine, small... it'll be nice. I think what'll be great is actually if it kind of cooks, because you didn't get any of the pith, if it cooks in there, and it basically will kind of confit in the fat. Okay. And uh, you pour all, you just pour all in, yeah, you can go in. So the first okay. stage, you want to go in with a good amount of um, more. We can probably go with another ladle, okay. and here's where I'll turn it down a little bit. Okay. Because like, again, this is gonna typically risotto takes around 20 minutes from start to finish. Oh my god, that's nothing. And um, I just thought it was much longer. Yeah, I mean it can be longer, but yeah. I think that a good it's gauge of time if you're having friends over and you're yeah. gonna be talking and yeah. like, you know, entertaining. Yeah. Um, I think it's around you'd budget for about 20 minutes. Okay. Um, in this case, I think it might happen a little faster. It really all depends also on how much you toast it, the fat, because you're right. starting that cooking process. Yeah. I mean, ideally, a lot of purists will say you need to cook risotto really slow and low for a long yeah, time so exactly. the starch comes out of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the rice and becomes creamy, but we're adding Parmesan and butter to this, so it's right. gonna become creamy. Anyways, and it will happen, yeah. it will happen. Okay, um, perfect. I was reading an interview of yours and you were talking about like how you break away from the strict rules that you that you learn in school. And that's how you kind of like progress into new places in cooking. And it's just, it just, it's the same in, I mean, it's the same specifically in painting. Right. But it's the same idea. Like you have to learn, you don't have to, but a lot of the great painting that's happened that's really pushed it further is the people who really were trained very traditionally and then they break all the rules as they move on. Well, I think the training, I think like what you're saying to that point, it's really important. I've always found it's really important to understand what the rules are yeah. and to actually learn them. Like, um, I think there's this big saying, and I don't know what people are calling, I think it's called like chaos cooking or something like that. Okay. But it's like this idea that like all bets are off and like there are no rules and everyone's coloring outside right. the lines. And I, I think it's cool. I think it's like yeah. um, a very like um, exciting thing to watch. Yeah. But I think it's really important to learn the rules. Yeah. Like at least understand what those are there for, yeah. uh, learn the practice. And then when you feel confident enough, because it does take confidence to like go against what everyone yeah, is absolutely. like signing up for and saying yeah. like, yep, this is how you have to do it. Yeah. So it's really about the understanding and also being ready to like 
take a lot of shit if people like don't yeah. like what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Because it's so much easier for people to say like, well, this is how it's always yeah. been done. This is how you have to yeah, do it. Exactly. So I feel like in the earlier part of my career, I kind of like found a lot of pleasure in like doing things the wrong way because yes. I I liked that reaction. Yeah. Um, but also then you know. I wasn't. I think I wasn't really quite ready for the reaction that it got. A lot of right. such a polarizing thing. People like love you and they love to hate you. Yeah. And absolutely. I, I'm like a chef and a people pleaser, and I really just want everyone to love me. Yeah. So it was hard. Yeah. Um, I kind of gone in and out of that, yeah. like you know, breaking the rules. Yeah, like, yeah, you know. absolutely. I mean, it seems it's this. It's like a confidence that you do really have when you're younger. Right. You know, right. it's when you can break all the rules and you then you learn really fast, like actually this is painful when people are super critical and I don't know how to take it and you can mature into a different it's the same I think with art because it is because it's so public. Right. It is a performance. You are doing it for people. And I think in the art world you have the same like I always joke that it's like a bunch of broken people because you do want to be, you do want to be loved. Right, exactly. You're like, I want to please you. I want yeah. you to love me. I want to do something you like. And then they don't like it. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, what just happened? Did you ever find yourself then going back and just being like, I'm going to play it safe and play the hits and just do what I'm supposed to do? I think that I, I, I mix the hits in. Uh -huh. What I found is that it's a way, I'm not sure this is with cooking, it's a way to let people in. So I play the cliches, I play the hits, I give someone what they recognize so they can enter it, and then I, then there's all of this complexity around it mm -hmm. so that they can then, if they choose, kind of experience something else. Yeah. Like the olive oil that we were talking about, like you want the smoothness, that's how people get to know it, and right. then you learn more about it and you can have that feeling in the back of your throat and understand like, oh wait, this is just a different experience of olive oil that like, gives me a lot, a lot to play with later. But do you find it exhausting? Because at the end of the day, basically you're educating. You're like becoming a teacher to like the general public. Like, I mean, yeah. sometimes it's like, do you like that? You're I like, do oh, not I'm gonna do show that. You. No, no, but like, I mean, I, I think when think... you are like starting to like go a different path, yeah, you know, you are, people are like, well, why? And then they're kind of giving people the why. Like, yeah. I feel like that at a certain point, it's like you become like this, like, it's, you pick your battles, right? Yeah, I feel yeah, like that's yeah, a battle yeah, that you're yeah. picking if you're going to start yeah. to do something that's like a little bit different. Yeah. And like, I don't know, sometimes I'm like, I'm exhausted, you know, yeah. but I found that confidence again now that I'm older too. Yeah. And I'm not so naive and I've been able to like go through the ups and downs. Yeah. I'm kind of finding that confidence again to be like, yeah. okay, I have the energy to like, you know, cook a lemon sauce with the pith in it and yeah. like explain to yeah, people yeah. why you don't have to like, always take that out yeah and, you know so actually we should we could add some more so if you look now yeah this is like getting starting to get creamy already and we've only added you know it the first stage of broth gorgeous. so we can go ahead and add the same amount again the same amount okay three ladlefuls and i'm gonna let you stir now we okay, can I'm switch positions okay. and i'll let you stir and i'll let you actually finish it you can do it you, okay. you can do whatever feels I good do a lot of stirring of paint yeah, yeah. oh really yeah when you get really into it you kind of like leave yourself behind you know like out of body experience like you can sometimes when i'm painting even mixing paint like you get so into it that nothing else is around yeah does it happen in cooking or is it too yeah. you kind of have to be yeah definitely i mean i do find myself answering questions in like an autopilot mode a lot yeah. of the times yeah, where people yeah, will yeah. talk to me because a lot of times when you're cooking in a professional yeah. kitchen or something people yeah, are like yeah, hey yeah. like what's going on with this and you're like i'll find myself it got to a point towards the end of me cooking in restaurants where I could audibly tell someone how long it would be until something was ready. Like, oh, it's two minutes out. And like, you could almost time it. It would be exactly yeah. two minutes. Yeah. But I would just, that would be like yeah. a guttural thing. Yeah, body, physical memory or whatever. But, but to answer your question, yeah, I do kind of find myself in yeah. other places. A lot of times I'm doing something like this, I'm thinking about something completely right. different. It's not just like... Yeah this rice yeah you know it's like you <laughs> know it's like on every you know yeah, I mean? yeah yeah true. it's like yeah. oh i need to make sure i yeah. get laundry detergent later yeah yeah exactly but, i have to pay my taxes this green is beautiful yeah. but sometimes it is also like on a on a less serious level it is like yeah i just kind of like completely zoning out and yeah. like and not not thinking about like life or like a to-do list or anything yeah. like that it's just about yeah like, you know being in the zone i guess yeah 
I am, I have no patience for anything. I'm surprised that I'm a painter. Like right now I'm so bored. I don't want to cook risotto ever again. I oh, love really? it though. Really? This happens. Really? I'm like, I'm stirring well, forever, but I do this in painting. Dude, I how do long it do your paintings <laughs> exactly. take? Exactly, forever. Like, and I get so bored and really? I'm like, oh, what is this? Yeah. And you find yourself, because see like this, you can't like stop this. No, you can't. And yeah, you no. can? I mean, no, I guess same with you painting. Could, but... Same with painting. You can't, you really, you gotta just, well, at least in my painting, I feel like, Hopefully no one watches this and is like, that idiot doesn't know anything about painting. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, you can't stop. You gotta keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Typically I like, to, when I'm cooking, I like to kind of stand with my feet like at shoulders, like where my yeah. shoulders are. Yeah. And then you see how your arms are really high. You can just relax. There you go. Oh my God. And then like, So much go. easier. <laughs> yeah. But you, uh, yeah, it's like when I'm t training someone how to like cook a dish or saute yeah. on the, yeah, 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 yeah. You find your body, you kind of do weird things because it's like yeah. this seems like what I'm supposed to do. Oh my god, I should teach you. We should make a. You should make a painting I'm down. next. I'm That'd down. be so fun. Yeah, I've never done that before. Oh really? I've never painted. You've never before. painted? No. At all? I mean, maybe like in junior yeah. high or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's great. You do a very different kind of thinking. Like the best way to explain it is like when you're teaching someone to draw, okay. you have to teach them to turn their head off. Like anyone can learn to draw if you learn to turn your brain off so that you are just drawing what you see. Your brain isn't telling you, okay, this is what a square looks like. You're just drawing what you see. See, I find myself to, doing that if I do draw something, I'm think, overthinking it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, wait. This yeah, is you've got to turn your head off entirely. You cannot finish your own sentences. You do like your brain just goes to, and tries to fit everything in to take the shortest route. Mm. And when you're drawing or you know or painting, you want to turn that off entirely and just use your eyes. And it's really hard, wow. but anyone can do it. Really? Yeah, anybody. You have to mess up. Oh, of you course. have to mess up all the time to figure out how to do it right. And yeah. that's the same with, I mean, art. I mean, some of the best chefs in the world that I've gotten to cook with, I'll go and cook with them and, and they'll mess up. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, like, and a lot of really great chefs, I'm not sure how it is with artists, but a lot of, and I'm kind of speaking about myself too, because at, at a certain point when I had restaurants and stuff, you're so distracted with all of the stuff that's yes. with the business. And you kind of have like all these people that actually really help come and clean up after yeah, you and like help yeah, put you yeah, in a yeah, spot yeah, to yeah. be able to do your thing. Yeah. Which is something I'm really like relieved to not have to deal with anymore, but with, yeah. with not having restaurants. I feel like I've gotten to fall back in love with cooking again. Yeah. In a way that it just takes it back to the food. That's and, like, great. But you know. Um, and that's what you put in your cookbooks is yeah. that relationship to cooking, not the restaurant. Yeah. I mean, I've made two cookbooks now. The first one was like a restaurant cookbook. It was okay. about all the dishes we did at the restaurant. Oh, and right, like, okay. we're like, oh, this is going to be the best, di you know, but people got it and they liked it, but it was yeah. just like, there were recipes. There was like a duck recipe that was like a three day process. And it's like, oh, realistically, God. that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I think a lot of other restaurants and yeah. chefs were buying that, but like, it yeah. wasn't like, my dad in Oklahoma wasn't reading. Right, he right, got it because right. he's like right. proud of me, but right, of course. he yeah. wasn't going to make the no. clay wrapped wow. duck. You talk about your like life basically in it, your experiences, you give all this and that, um, that's something about like the recipes now online, uh -huh. like they include all of that. Uh -huh. It's a very, people want to know your experience with your food. It adds to their experience. You know, when you go online, you find a recipe and it's like, oh, yeah. you know, somebody had a vacation and they went to blah, blah, blah. And you heat and you're like, where's the goddamn recipe? <laughs> but, <laughs> people really yeah. <laughs> but people One really do. But people really do want to hear. One day they went on a walk to the Apollo. Then... Yeah, exactly. exactly. But people want that. They want to know the whole experience. It adds to it. Yeah, the narrative is really important. Yeah. You know? I mean, especially when you go to like nice restaurants and they'll, yeah. sometimes I find it kind of annoying, but sometimes you go to restaurants and, and like, they'll give you a whole dissertation of like, how yes. the person's vision was and it's like yeah, i just give yeah, me the yeah, pasta yeah, yeah. yeah exactly pasta. exactly i respect it though i respect yeah. the it depends on yeah the absolutely no wow. same yeah same all right so how are you feeling how bored are you right now i'm so bored not with the conversation i mean you want me to take over, over. <laughs> i'm generous so basically you're gonna stir 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 until oh you're so much better at stirring well, thank you yeah, but you're, you're also welcome. so much better than painting so um <laughs> at painting um so I like to reduce this, get this down. Like this is almost too thick in my opinion. Okay. What you want to do is you want to take it down towards really tight okay. and not loose because when you add the cheese and butter, it will get loose again. Right. Okay. Right? It won't yes. get too tight. So basically I'll turn the heat off now. And if you want, are you good at zesting? 
Yeah, I can zest. I mean, I don't zest? know that I'm good at it, or, but I can do it. Um, you want to zest both of those lemons? I'm going to give this back to you. So you're going to do both of the lemons into here, the zest of two lemons. All of it? Yeah. And then, or do you want to do all of it? You can do the second okay, one. Okay. <laughs> you want me to do the first one and then oh, I'll do the second one? Yeah, go ahead. No, you got it. You're okay. doing great. You're doing excellent. <laughs> That's perfect. More? Um, you said two. This I is know, like I know, I feel like you were getting bored. Okay, oh my okay, god. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. And don't grate your fingers. Oh my god. You can see now it's like getting really creamy. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. It's crazy, right? And it smells really good. And what I'll do is I like to go... <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I like to go like creamy, 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 and then right before I serve, I'll add a little bit of broth to loosen it. And okay. Then, so it'll be really nice. Put that in. All right, so we can plate it. Um, we're what color? Plate. What color plate do you want to put on? I saw they have a couple of different colors here. They have pink, pink, black, or white. Pink. We want... Yeah, let's do pink. Okay, perfect. One of the funnest things about plating risotto is that you kind of have to like hit the bottom of the plate to make it like spread out evenly. Oh. So you go like a nice ladle right in the middle. Okay. Have you made a taste of this yet? No. I think it's going to be perfect. Okay. Right in the middle. And you can just shake it around if you want, or you can also just like. Oh, wow. Slap the bottom of it. And another I want to do that. Yeah, you get to slap. Okay. So I'll let you do the second one. Okay. You just like right in the middle and you just. And you kind of like tilt it so it like. Oh, wow. It's nice and even, right? Okay, I'm going to try this. You can slap it around. I'm going to slap it around. Okay, now I'm going to do the that. turn also. Oh, man. What about Oh my god, it looks amazing. Wow. So I like to finish it. I think that like you could squeeze the lemon on both of okay. them, right? Just around, however you like. I think that like acid, a little bit of spice is really important. Okay. Um, and most of the things I cook, um, I think I probably make some Italians very angry that I'm putting chili powder on this, but this is like a We're Korean, here to piss off Italians. This is a Korean chili powder, just not too hot. Okay. So we'll put this on at the end. Okay. So we'll do it like this. Matcha, olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of chili. Okay. So you, the way you do this is you just tap this on your finger and okay. kind of dust it like that. So let's do oh a little bit. Oh my God, like it's that. gorgeous. So matcha. Okay. Like kind of, you want to do yours? Yeah. Okay, there's enough in here. We'll do it. Chef. Oh my god, this is this bit. is the fun part. Never mind salt. stirring. And then we'll do a little bit of you wanna drizzle a little olive oil on it? Can you do it? Because I don't sure. do the thumb thing. Oh my god, gorgeous, thank you. And you can do a little sprinkle of salt okay. on top. Just a pinch? Yeah. Oh my god. And then this is the chili powder, so I'm like gonna like just go like that. Okay. How much? It's not spicy at all. So just it's whatever you feel like. That's going to be your plate. So however hot you want it to be. How did you do it? Just like that? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so you're pretty. Do it like you're throwing dice. So pretty. All right. That's it. You okay. It. You're a risotto chef. We did it. I want to show the camera. There you go. Sick. Okay. One more question. We have one more question for Danny Bowen. Yes. What do you think of my work? I think it's amazing. It's very huge. Yeah. And I think it's really cool. How do, what do you think of your work? Of this latest show? This show that's up now, I'm pretty proud of. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be good. excited when the opening is over? Yes. I'm <laughs> going to be thrilled when the opening is over. Well, I'm really excited. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I, let's Thank taste you. It. Yeah, let's taste it. Wait, we Wait, have we a have, professional we have, taster. We have Hello. two professional tasting chefs. Hello. Would you like to introduce them? Yeah. Let's do this. All right, and then you can say whose you like better. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Wait, we have to Okay, you have to introduce you introduce yourself. What's your name? What's your name? What's, What's your, your name? profession? My name is um, Nina Bowen, and um, honestly, I am... What's your like, profession? Uh, what do you do for a living? I sometimes, like, taste test, and when my dad had a restaurant, sometimes I did the dishes. You did the dishes? Oh, nice. oh my gosh, you're going to get me in so much Child trouble. Child labor. <laughs> Genius. Sometimes. All right. But, um, the other taste tester, taste yeah. introduce yourself. I'm Will, and uh, I'm also a professional taster. There you go. <laughs> okay, right. let's do this. And yeah. The other one. Wait, should I mix it? Or no, you I, can yeah, do whatever you want. You're the professional taste tester. Is it really hot? No. No, no, it's not hot at all. 
<sighs> what do you think, Nina? It's really good, huh? Ah! Very good. Yes! Right. Genius! It's one of the best I've ever had. Oh my God, that's fantastic. We did it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. I you stirred, you plated. You garnished. I really I'm stirred. Nice. You're stirring. Do you want to close, close out? Yeah, let's do it. We're done. Wow. Yay. Wait, what is my close out? Thank you so much. Do I have a close out? This is amazing. Thank you. I'm so happy. We're okay. <laughs> It's a lot of work, this interview. <laughs> I like to sit and talk. But it'll be worth it. Yeah, it will be. The thing is, I thought it would be a little bit like Martha Stewart, where like everything is done for you so oh, that yeah. you chat, and then you're like, here's the finished one, and oh, you don't okay. actually have to do the work. Sorry. You did an excellent job. Thank you. That's great.